In the world of cinema, there are those movies that tickle our taste buds for intrigue and mystery, leaving an everlasting aftertaste that lingers in our minds. Cast your memory back to that first encounter with the 1978 cinematic gem, who is killing the great chefs of Europe. The very title is a curious riddle that drew you in, sparking curiosity about the delectable concoction of murder and cuisine that awaited. Perhaps it was a quiet evening, the screen flickering to life, as you embarked on a journey that melded gastronomy and suspense in a way you'd never imagined. As the plot unfolded, you found yourself caught in a tantalizing web of culinary brilliance and unexpected demise. The brilliant chefs, each a master of their craft, met their untimely ends in ways as creative as their signature dishes. The screen became a canvas for suspense and amusement, the whodunit nature of the film intertwined with the sumptuous visuals of gourmet dishes. Your senses were entangled in a dance of suspense and satisfaction, much like the delicate balance of flavors in a gourmet meal. Do you recall those memorable moments that etched themselves into your cinematic memory? Perhaps it was the tension that gripped you as you attempted to decipher the killers, identity before the characters themselves. Maybe it was the laughter that bubbled up as culinary artistry collided with dark humor. And oh, that feeling of satisfaction as each puzzle piece slotted into place, revealing the intricacies of the plot. But enough reminiscing for now. Let's journey into the heart of the matter some intriguing facts about this cinematic masterpiece that you might not have known. From behind the scenes anecdotes to the inspiration behind the plot, we're about to delve into a buffet of trivia that will leave you hungry for more knowledge. So, without further ado, let's embark on this cinematic feast of discovery. From the minds that crafted this enigmatic tale to the unforeseen challenges faced during production, prepare to be surprised by the savory nuggets of information awaiting you. And remember, the next time you savor the memories of who is killing the great chefs of Europe, Yowl have a whole new layer of appreciation for the artistry that unfolded on screen. Hungry for facts? Stay tuned, because a delightful assortment of behind-the-scenes insights is about to be served. Who is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe? is a 1978 film that skillfully blends mystery, comedy, and culinary artistry into a captivating story. Originating from the novel Someone is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe by Nan and Ivan Lyons, the movie weaves an intriguing plot centered around a series of bizarre murders targeting renowned chefs. The film introduces a cast of iconic characters, including the charming culinary critic Max Van de Veer, played by George Segel, and the talented pastry chef Natasha O'Brien, portrayed by Jacqueline Bissett. As the murders unfold, the movie showcases a unique style, blending light-hearted humor with suspenseful detective work, all set against the backdrop of delectable gastronomy. This fusion of genres contributes to the film's distinctive appeal, captivating audiences with its blend of suspense, wit, and delectable visuals. Who is killing the great chefs of Europe? has left an indelible mark on popular culture, combining elements of murder mystery and culinary delights in a way that continues to resonate with viewers. Its influence is seen in subsequent works that explore the intersection of crime and gastronomy. In summary, the film's origins, memorable characters, genre-bending style, and lasting impact make it a remarkable addition to cinematic history, enticing audiences to savor both its intricate narrative and culinary delights. Lights. Lights. Murder Mystery Unveiled, a twist on the silver screen in 1978 seconds who is killing the great chefs of Europe. In the annals of cinematic adaptations, the 1978 film Who is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe stands as an intriguing departure from its literary source. Based on a novel that divulged the murderer's identity from the outset, the film opted for a riveting reversal, keeping audiences guessing until the final credits rolled. But that's not all, the killer on screen diverged from the novel's original antagonist, adding an extra layer of suspense. Unlike the novel's upfront revelation, where the culinary killer's identity was laid bare, the film masterfully wielded suspense by holding the murderer's secret close to its chest until the climactic conclusion. This choice thrust viewers into a captivating game of whodunit, inviting them to piece together the puzzle alongside the characters on screen. The movie's directorial journey was marked by intriguing twists as well. Originally, the formidable Robert Aldrich, known for his knack for suspense and intrigue, was reportedly eyeing the director's chair. Aldrich's potential involvement added a layer of excitement, given his track record of crafting engaging narratives. 
but the intrigue didn't stop there. The esteemed Milo's foreman, renowned for his deft handling of complex narratives, was also linked to the project. The possibility of foreman's touch on the film heightened expectations, given his pedigree in bringing rich characters and gripping storylines to life. In this cinematic endeavor, the audience was treated not only to a culinary caper, but also to a series of choices that deftly navigated the delicate balance between revelation and suspense. The filmmaker's decision to conceal the killer's identity until the film's climax, in contrast to the novel's upfront approach, lent an air of mystery that resonated deeply with audiences. And while the novel and the film might have diverged in their villains, both left an indelible mark on the murder mystery genre. In the world of adaptations, who is killing the great chefs of Europe? remains a noteworthy example of how a shift in perspective can breathe new life into a familiar narrative, creating an experience that keeps audiences on the edge of their seats until the very end. The very end. The very end. Food Critic's quest for culinary perfection unfolds in 1,978 seconds who is killing the great chefs of Europe. In the gastronomic world of 1,978 seconds who is killing the great chefs of Europe. Food critic Maximilian Van de Veer, portrayed by Robert Morley, takes center stage with his audacious theory on the world's most fabulous meal. Van de Veer's provocative article challenges the culinary elite, sparking a delectable murder mystery that unfolds against a backdrop of hot cuisine. Notably, the film's sumptuous scenes set in the illustrious kitchen of Buckingham Palace were not crafted within its regal walls. Instead, the new Lido restaurant in Paris provided the elegant setting that brought the royal culinary domain to life. The film's keen attention to detail and dedication to authenticity create a feast for the eyes as well as the imagination. Who is killing the great chefs of Europe? Marks one of the four captivating collaborations between the talented actor George Segel and the skilled director Ted Kotcheff. Their creative synergy shines through as the movie follows a delectable trail of mystery, humor, and suspense. Segel and Kotcheff's prior joint ventures, including fun with Dick and Jane, established a dynamic foundation that enriched the cinematic landscape. Intriguingly, these two accomplished artists also brought their shared talents to the small screen, collaborating on projects like The Desperate Hours and Of Mice and Men. The legacy of their creative partnership is undeniable, with who is killing the great chefs of Europe. Standing as a delectable testament to their ability to captivate audiences across multiple mediums. As the film takes us on a riveting journey into the world of hot cuisine, gourmet murders, and the pursuit of culinary excellence. The convergence of Max Van de Veer's audacious theory, the elegance of the new Lido restaurant, and the artistic synergy of Segel and Kotcheff weave a cinematic tapestry that leaves viewers hungry for more. The 1978 film Who is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe? Sizzled onto the screen two years after the release of its source novel, Someone is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe, penned by Nan Lyons and Ivan Lyons in 1976. This culinary whodunit, directed by Ted Kotcheff, brought a delectable mystery to life as renowned chefs met their untimely demise. What sets this adaptation apart is its mouth-watering twist. The novel itself tantalizingly offered up recipes for each sumptuous dish featured in the story, turning readers into potential home cooks. A feast for both mystery enthusiasts and culinary aficionados, the film retained this unique flavor by showcasing these recipes on the big screen. Beyond its tantalizing premise, the film garnered attention for another reason. In 2006, Warner Bros. stirred the pot by announcing a remake in the works. Excitement brewed among fans and cinephiles, but the anticipated reincarnation has yet to grace the screens as of 2018, leaving moviegors hungry for an updated taste of this captivating tale. As we await the return of this delectable mystery to the silver screen, who is killing the great chefs of Europe? remains a classic that perfectly melds the art of gastronomy with the intrigue of a suspenseful narrative. A true testament to the timeless allure of a well-crafted recipe for entertainment. <laughs> Culinary intrigue, unveiling secrets of who is killing the great chefs of Europe. In the vibrant tapestry of 1978 cinema, who is killing the great chefs of Europe, emerges as a delectable mystery that combines gastronomy with suspense. Directed by Ted Kotcheff and originally distributed by Warner Brothers, this culinary whodunit offers a sumptuous feast for both the eyes and the imagination. 
While savoring the twists in terms of the cinematic delicacy, it's fascinating to note the film's evolution from its source material. Adapted from a novel, the movie underwent alterations, most notably in its conclusion. Departing from the book's original ending, the film crafts its own resolution, enhancing the intrigue that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. Moreover, the screenplay shrewdly omits explicit content that adorn the pages of the source novel, ushering the focus toward the culinary escapades that define the movie, adding an extra layer of intrigue to its history, who is killing the great chefs of Europe embarked on a unique journey through distribution channels. Produced by Lorimer, the film found itself released on home video in specific territories during the 1,980 territories distinct from those governed by Warner Bros. This distinctive arrangement persisted until 1989, when Warner Communications acquired Lorimer, reuniting the film under a single corporate umbrella. Yet, the true stars of this cinematic banquet are the mouth-watering dishes that grace the screen. A staggering $180,000 of the budget was allocated to create culinary artistry that tantalizes the senses. Notably, the vibrant fish market scene, set against the romantic backdrop of Venice, saw approximately $3,000 worth of real food used to craft an authentic atmosphere, demonstrating the dedication to visual and sensory authenticity. As celluloid history intertwines with culinary innovation, who is killing the great chefs of Europe? emerges as a riveting testament to the fusion of genres and tastes. From its inception in the hands of Lorimer to its eventual reunion with Warner Bros., this cinematic enigma leaves an indelible mark on the annals of cinema. Through its unique blend of suspense, culinary prowess, and creative adaptation, this film continues to intrigue audiences and gastronomes alike. Homes alike. Homes alike. As we bid adieu to the cinematic feast that is the 1978 masterpiece, who is killing the great chefs of Europe, we find ourselves not just at the end credits, but at the beginning of a savory journey through our own memories. This culinary caper has whisked us through a world where murder and gastronomy dance in a delectable tango, leaving us both thrilled and tantalized. Just as a chef concocts a dish that's not merely a blend of ingredients, but a symphony of flavors, this film weaves together suspense, humor, and a dash of culinary extravagance. It's a tapestry that engages our senses, prompting us to recall our own experiences in the realm of food and film. Perhaps it evokes the aroma of a long-forgotten family recipe or the laughter shared during a movie night with friends. Now, as the credits roll and the curtain falls, I invite you to savor the aftertaste of this cinematic gem. What memories did it stir? What thoughts simmered beneath its surface? How did it leave its flavorful mark on your palate? Share your reflections, your favorite moments, or the way it sparked your own culinary curiosity. Remember, just as great chefs infuse their creations with their unique essence, your experiences with this film are an integral part of its rich history. So, stir the cauldron of your thoughts and let the flavors of nostalgia and appreciation meld. Your story adds yet another layer to the tapestry woven by this timeless classic. Thank you for indulging in this cinematic feast and for sharing your own flavors of connection with who is killing the great chefs of Europe. Until we meet again in the world of stories and reminiscences, keep savoring the magic of the movies. Bon appetit, and remember, it's all about the perfect blend of ingredients, in film and in life, and in life, and in life.